Well, hello. Um, today I'm going to try to uh, show you guys how I do my labeling. I've had a few people ask, you know, how's this process done? And I'd love to see, uh, a, you know, a class teaching labeling or and things like that. But um, I just want to show my process and see um, if you guys can uh, get inspired. Feel free to follow along. Um, I will try to entertain you as we go along. Um, and hopefully not take too long with this. So I just created um, a new men's line that I'm excited about. It's called Silver Saddle by Tires Essentials. And um, so uh, Silver Saddle is the community that we live in. So that's kind of the inspire inspiration. And um, my shop is in a town called Norco, California, and it's called Horsetown, USA. So horses are very special to um, this community. So I thought this would be a nice um, brand to kind of reflect that. So whenever you're working on your logos, just make sure your logos reflect your target audience and your um, customer base. And, um, you know, that's kind of my idea behind that. So what I want to do is I'm going to create like a, a, a men's spray label kind of like a men's like aromatherapy spray for room or um a body spray or just something like that so uh i'm going to create this label for a four ounce bottle and what i'm going to do is just kind of draw out uh a rectangle here this is adobe illustrator this is what i use for all of my designing it is an industry standard graphic design program so you'll find that you'll have complete control and um, tons of options with the software and the exported files are a vector so you can pretty much take them anywhere and get them printed at an amazing quality so i just created like a border just so i can see what kind of space i'm working with uh, and then i just locked that layer i'm going to create a new layer and i'm going to bring in the well first i'm going to show my rulers so i just hit command r on a uh, apple to show my rulers and I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna unlock this real quick show my halfway point because one side is gonna be like the front and the other side is gonna be the back so and then I'll put another guide here to show halfway up and down just for visual center um, so now I'm gonna lock that again go back to the new layer I made and I'm going to import or just copy and paste my logo. So here's my logo. Get everything. I want to make sure that I have no locked layers. Yeah. Okay. So I have everything. Copy. Command C. And Command V to paste. So this is super huge. Typically you want your logo about uh, maybe like an inch to an inch and a half. So... This is about an inch wide, so that's that's cool. So I got my logo in there, and um, so next I want to create. Uh, so basically, the elements of the of our label we want to have uh, the the branding. We want to have what the product is, what the fragrance is, the weight. Uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So, I always reference um, Mary Gale's soap and cosmetic labeling book that you can find on Amazon for um, the specs for your for your books or for your labels. I mean, and um, so I'm just gonna try to kind of follow her example. So my logo is in multiple parts. I'm gonna group this. Maybe make it a little bit bigger. I don't know. We'll see. I don't want it to look too ridiculous, but we want it to make sense. So here's the logo. Then next, I'm going to put, um, let's do what it is. So we'll put in print here. Um, cologne body spray or something like that, right? Um, and then what we'll do, or maybe I'll just play body spray. 
That's cool. Body spray. Bam. Simple. Cologne was looking too complicated, too busy for me. So I like that. And then we will put the scent. So the scent is going to be, um, uh, well, maybe that's, well, the Silver Saddle is the scent itself. So I don't really need to say the scent. So I'm going to say um, um, refreshingly scented, just, just to de describe it. Um, fragrance I don't know something like that refreshingly scented fragrance that works and so that's like my sub title because silver saddle is my, my fragrance everything silver saddle is going to be the same scent so put that as a what I like to do is always create a hierarchy for your information um, you don't want to put all of your information at the same point size so you know, this is large, it's about 12 point, this is 9 point, um, etc. And so then what I'm going to do is we're going to put the weight. So um, let's say it's going to be 8 ounces and um, the milliliters, I'm not sure what 8 ounce milliliters is, I think it's like 200 and something. Let's just go to Google. Google. Eight ounces to mLs. This is my cheat. I always do this so I can double check to make sure it's right. Two hundred thirty-six milliliters. All right, bam. I'm not gonna put the points. We're just gonna round it. And then milliliter. All right. So I try to always keep this at twelve point. I know twelve point is ridiculous, but that is what uh, Mary Dell rec recommends. Just because. Um, you know, we want to make sure that it, we're following the guidelines. So we're going to put, um, our brand like in the top third section In the bottom third, we have our weight here. We have, um, what the, the product identity, what it is, a little description about it. Okay. So. I think this is looking pretty, pretty nice. So then, and I'm just giving the elements here. I'm not doing any type styling, no designing, just giving the elements here. So then on the back side, I'm going to put um, the ingredients. So just drawing a type box. I'm going to do about seven points for the ingredients. And See, does she have a recommendation for the ingredient type size? This one. Definitely want to just include the ingredients in the order that they were. Uh, okay, the order that uh, from greatest to least. So I'm going to include. Um, so mine, my ingredients are alcohol, water, um, aloe vera, juice, um, fragrance, and I think that's pretty much it. Water, alcohol, juice. Okay. And then sometimes I'll put, um, depending on the spray, I'll put a preservative. So we'll put that in there. Now, this is just my generic ingredients. I'm going to go to, I use this little tool from Lotion Crafter. And they have um, the inky names here. I-N-C-I names. Find water. I think water is just water. So we can say we can say water or aqua. That's good. Uh, and then aloe vera juice. Let's see what they have for that one. Juice. So I'm using the ninth edition CTFA ingredients dictionary. 
So we're going to put aloe vera juice in here. And then uh, fragrance, I think is good. Optifin. Let's see if they have Optifin in here. Yeah. Okay, so this is what they have they list that. So we just put that in there like this. All right, so this is that was my... I'll double check all this before we go um, live with our listings, but this just gives you an idea. So we have our ingredients. Then I'm going to also put um, directions um, to use as a body spray. Um, hold. Um, yeah. We'll say hold about um, 12 inches away and spray towards the body, keeping it away from the eyes. And this can also be used as a room spray. And then I always put like a little note. Discontinue use if irritation occurs. All right. So we got directions, the ingredients, and then we want to have our um Manufactured information, so manufactured, or I will say handmade um, by Tires Essentials, um, address 1660, Henry Avenue, 616, Marco, CA. to 860 website okay all right so we've got um, the name of the business the address of the business uh, websites people can find us um, a little warning uh, about do not spray in your eyes um, so just trying to hit that checklist. So now what I would do is like this one can probably be smaller. Probably wouldn't go, let's do 5.5 okay, for the ingredients. This we can do also 5.5. Right. So that looks nice. And sometimes what I'll do is um, I feel like Justified looks nice, um, but not all the time. So we'll see. Let's see if we can get it to fit in here, and then maybe center this. Okay. All right, and then this one seven. I might um so so my okay so now we have the elements here which looks nice maybe we'll do justified on this one too so I got my ingredients I got my directions so now we just want to pretty this thing up right now because it's really plain so what I might do is I kind of want to texture behind this so oh, let's say because we've gotten to a good point save and we're going to put this in so saddle which is right here we're going to call it body spray label and so body spray label I'm just saving it in its na uh, native format right now because we'll export it into the right formats in a minute. 
So I was thinking to do like maybe a leather background for this. I wanted to have some kind of texture. So let's see. This is a Adobe stock and um, with Adobe stock you can purchase images to use. Um, the, the extended license allows you to use it uh, for unlimited impressions and can, it can be resold um, as part of your product design. So I always definitely recommend that. It's like, I like this one. This is giving me some nice texture right there. Um, so what I'm going to do here is download the preview. This is until we are sure that this is what we want. Um, so I'm going to just put this in my body spray folder and I'm going to create another layer under all the artwork we just added, but above the background. And I'm going to select, no, that's all right. I'm going to put, I'm going to lock that back. I'm going to place the image we just downloaded here. Okay, so now we have like this nice little leather texture. I think that's cool. It has the Adobe background in it, but we're just trying to see what it looks like. Um, and okay, so now that we have it in here, I can see that my logo is not going to pop off of that like I want. So that's why it's good to get the um, to get a uh, preview first. So I guess either I want to do something lighter, I guess I want to do something lighter. What about this one? It's got good texture to it. Um, so you can download the previews as much as you want, but um, they won't be high resolution. It's just going to be for you to see if you like it. This one's kind of nice too. But it doesn't have like that worn. I like that worn leather feel. This one's nice. This one's light, but you can see the texture. That could be really cool. Whoa, did I just watch this What did I just click on? I think I just <laughs> did I just license that? I didn't mean to do that. Oh, no, this is this is a preview. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> All right, so let's see. If we place this last light light one that I downloaded. What does this look like? It's really big. So it's a vector. It's a vector background, which is cool. Which vector just means you can scale it up as big as you want and it'll always look nice. I kind of like that. I kind of like it. I kind of really like that. Okay. Um, all right. Cool. Um, so for your backgrounds, what you can do is you can um, use like a little masking tool so that it's not, uh, I don't mean to where the points yeah, the rounded corners but you just draw the shape on top of the image you select the image behind it and you go to clipping mask and you clip it and what that's going to do is just going to crop it to the shape that you created so um i kind of like that i'm gonna look just a little bit more to see if there's any more textures that i might like but it's light enough so you can read my logo. It's got movement. Let's see, this one's nice. Um, let's see if this one might look good. It's got a nice vibe to it. 
And I try not to get too lost into this process because we could do this forever. Um, but let me go in here. I'm just going to place this new one right above it. I can go inside of the clip, clipped path that we created and uh, use that same path for uh, put just so that we can see it and then we go back up to the main layer there. You know, I'm kind of kind of going fast. I think I like this better. I like this better because it has like a little bit more dynamics to the background. You can really feel it. It looks more realistic. I really like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and license this one. Just so that we have the high resolution version and you'll see the uh, the difference. When I'm ready to go to market, you're going to want to go ahead and use the extended license here. But for right now, this is going to give me um, the high res image for the artwork so we can see what, it looks, what it's going to look like. So let me go in here. Just double clicking into the image uh, that had the clipping path and I'm deleting the clipping path or the artwork that was in there before and now I'm just going to put in the actual high res image so you can see the difference. I kind of want to keep as much of, of that uh, variety and color in there. Ah. Oh, I really like that. I really like that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is um, let me see if I can find a font that is a little bit more interesting. So for the body spray, okay, so for this, I feel like that's going to be too much of the same font. But let's see. Bar Barbaro is what I use here. So we got the Western version. Oh, that's a little different. Western body spray. What size is this? Seventeen. Um. I kind of like it. We'll keep looking. Um, for refreshingly scented fragrance. I kind of feel like. Let's see. For some reason, I feel like I want to do like a typewriter. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going into my fonts here. And I don't have any filters, so I should just go to a more of a typewriter font. That one's kind of cool. It's got a nice vibe to it. Ooh, too small. Hmm. Um, spray. Just want to introduce one other type style. Not bad. Um. So this looks like small. Just so that we're creating a hierarchy of information here. Um, maybe do all caps on this. So we're, we're the same size. Professionally scented fragrance. Okay. And then I like to do I like to do a narrow font for all of these. I just think narrow, if, we, if you do end up with a whole lot of um, information for ingredients and directions and stuff, a narrow font is um, is uh, easier to work with. So I like that. This is like a nice manly feel to it, huh? It's got a nice bold weight to it. Oh, 
of like the way that looks. All right, so we have our weight on the bottom. We have our directions, right? And then um, ingredients. If I keep that coming. Maybe I'll put my um, Tires Essentials logo here. Looks like they're right here. All right, well, let me just copy it. Copy it. Go back here. We'll put it together so that we can scale everything. Uh, so now, instead of that, we have my logo. Right? And then I might just do put that above it like that. Okay, so that's cool. And then we got our little ingredients and okay, we're getting pretty good. So then, then I want to put, I have this, uh, I'm going to save, so we've done some good work here. I have a file, I can't remember. Uh, hold on. If I go back to Adobe, I have... Uh, a file that has um, all the icons. For you know, yeah, here it is. So I, I already licensed it, so I can download this again, or instead of downloading again, I can just find the name so I can open it. So I just copied that um, code and I'm gonna go to my desktop, I'm gonna go in my search, I'm gonna place that in, and then I can go send some other folder that I can open it because I found it, and so. You know, I might put my favorite uh, icons on here. So I can say handmade, we can say um, cruelty free, we can say um, recycle, you know, time period, and what else? I think, I think that's a, this is a good set of icons here. And this communicates to your customer why they might be excited about using your product. So I'm just going to paste these here somewhere. They're, they're all over the place. Um, they just came in really big, so I'm just going to put them together like this. And they have these cool little tools where you can center up everything. You can even distribute the space between items if it does it right. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why. But that's all right. Let's move that video over like this. Okay. So then, I don't know if we want them to be black, but that's fine. We can do black. So I'm going to scale this way down. We're going to put this on our label. Zooming back in. Okay, so scale it down. We have our little icons, if you like. I'll center all this, so I'm gonna group this so we don't lose that. Okay, so we've got directions, we've got ingredients. We've got icons to tell more about the product. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. You'll see me play around with these things a lot because I'm just trying to get it to where it feels good but I think we're about there so um, and then we might say something catchy so okay so I am gonna go ahead and center these because it's driving me a little bit nuts that it's not centered so center oops 
just throwing things off for some reason. I'm just gonna do everything else. Okay, and just have to eyeball this one. All right. So we have that, and we're gonna center all of this stuff too. So I'm gonna hit my little center icon. All right. So now we feel good. Everything's centered. And I kind of feel like I want to use this color. Okay, so I don't know if you can see this. Everything else we've been putting in here is black. But I have this nice warm brown that I used in the logo. And I want everything else to be that same warm brown. So I just changed that by clicking that. And I wonder if I can do the same with this. Yes. Yes. And the logo. Perfect. So now it has that brown color to it. Um, I might do some kind of catchy phrase here. I don't know what, but um, maybe we say um, uh, every. Men should feel like a cowboy. Uh, -uh. something fun. And then um, just want to put some personality in here. And that's so, um, you know, boring. <laughs> want it to be fun. Okay, so I'm just going to add that to this. I'm going to group all this so that, oops. Oh, I might want to put my URL a little bigger. I always usually do that. URL a little bigger. And we're going to make that a little tighter. Letting a little tighter. Okay. I'll put this down here. I'm going to go a little bit wider with that. I told you I'll, I'll be playing around with this a lot. This is my life. I always do this. If you find yourself spending a lot of time, you're not alone. Because we all do it. Okay. I think I'm going to see if I can bold that a little bit more. Since it doesn't have a, a black, I'm just going to add a, a stroke. A little bit of a stroke just so that it has a look of being bolder and I'm gonna do the same thing here I'm just gonna highlight it drop the color to the stroke uh, outline and then do a 0.1 stroke in there just so it looks a little bolder since there's not an actual um, bold version of that font all right so now we got a cute little saying up here all right so I'm feeling good about this. This is fun. This looks good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to expand this out a little bit more, is um, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna get rid of this layer that had the the uh, background. I don't need that anymore. Uh, that's got the background color, and this has all the artwork on this layer. All right, so we're gonna save this. And I am going to export this as a JPEG to my body spray folder. Okay, export as JPEG, same way, 300 dpi for printing, beautiful. And I'm also gonna save it as, I'm gonna select all. I'm going to do type create outlines and I'm going to save a copy as a PDF. Okay. Cause if you create outlines, then no matter who you give it to, if you don't, if they don't have the fonts, they'll still be able to print it because these types, the typeface will be all considered a shape instead of a font. So we're going to do that. Optimize for that. Beautiful. 
Okay. So I saved as a copy because I'm just going to undo this so that my actual original file won't be outlined. All right. So go back to. Okay. So we're good. Um, so now I'm going to try to print this. So I'm going to pause here and continue uh, to show you this method of printing that I have never tried. But I'm going to try it because I saw some videos online that I think might work. So hopefully watching me create my label for my men's body spray was um, informative and entertaining. Please let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to do this again even more. All right. So tune in for my next video to see um, how I label it or how I print it and apply it to the bottle. Thanks for watching. Okay, so this is the second part of my labeling video. Um, I have a, a selfie printer by Canon and it's for photos. And I saw a YouTube video of somebody using these kind of printers to make um, stickers. And I figured stickers could also work as labels, right? It's worth a try, right? So this is 2.1 by 3.4. Um, it's called um, Canon Selfie Compact Paper Printer, uh, Photo Printer, KC18IF, okay? And then you're gonna need to have this little adapter, which I found out. Um, it typically comes with a, a postcard size tray but this is different. This is for specifically for this size um, paper, as you can see, the 2.1 by 3.4. So I'm just gonna try this one-handed. Open this up, and we're gonna, here, I'm going to mount this camera so we can watch this together while my hands are free. Okay, so, I'm just going to open this. Up. Just got it in today. So let's just take it out. Okay. Pretty cool. And then, oh, it's got like a little sticky thing on it. So let's see if we take this sticky, the sticky out. This is like a little protective. Okay, and then we're going to open. I felt something else sticky, I thought. Okay, we're just gonna open this and um, so you do have to make sure you have the correct uh, ink and printing cartridge in so this is for four by six as you can see I'm gonna take that out and this printer cartridge comes with the paper so we're going to put in the correct one hold on i can't see just snaps in it says card so it knows it's the card size and this is the paper so as you can see it's got a beautiful shine to it it is already perforated so we're just gonna Take just, I'm just gonna put like a few of these into the tray. Now, I am not sure which direction the paper is supposed to go in. I'm assuming it goes like this. Or does it go like this? Oh, it fits better like this, so maybe it goes like that. Okay, <laughs> hopefully, that's right. <laughs> So we see how we loaded it in here. I'm gonna close that down. And I think this stays open. Okay, and then we're gonna mount it in, just snaps into the printer like that. Okay, so we got our paper loaded in, got our cartridge. Um, so I'm gonna try to use this size for this typical um, four ounce amber glass spray bottle. Uh, so I'm going to use the artwork that we created earlier for my um, Silver Saddle brand. 
Um, so if I open this, oops, that's the video. This is the, lo the label we just created. So I'm going to print, okay? But I gotta set up this to go to the right place. So I have selfie in there and I had postcard in there before, but I want the one that says 54 by 86 millimeters. So, and I want that to be borderless. Okay, let's see if that updates. Ooh, so that updated. We're gonna do one copy. We're not scaling anything. Showing the right size there. All right, so I'm gonna hit print here. All right, and then when you set up your printer, you do have to make sure your printer is on the same wireless network as your computer so that it will talk to each other. You have to add the printer into your list of printers, so you have to do that first. So now, it looks like something's happening. So grab the paper. So is it now printing? Um, oh, well oh, those are the colors. So it's doing the yellow. It's doing the red pass. You just four passes. The blue. You can see it's like layering color on. And it's done. Okay. So that was pretty easy. So look at that beautiful finish. I can probably um, adjust my artwork a little bit so that this fits better. But that was pretty cool, pretty fast too. My idea is that um, eventually I'm gonna do like a custom fragrance bar and I wanted to be able to print labels on the fly uh, so people can add their own like name, fragrance name and stuff like that. So, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try this. Um, behind the scenes, you know, I'll probably update the artwork so that it all fits on there, but, and there's like a little bit of a discoloration maybe, and a little bit of, um, I don't know, like a little shadow, but for the most part, that's pretty good. So it says, you know, to make sure before you print it, not to get fingerprints on it. So we, we did that. And now I'm just peeling off the label and we're going to see if it sticks to this bottle here. So on the bottle, there's like a little line that you follow to make sure your label's worn straight. So I'm going to try to do that. It's not quite straight. Okay. That looks right. So now... We've got a bottle label. Well, that's pretty cute. I like that. Ingredients on the side here. So the only size they have for this is the 2.1 by 3.4. So, um, you know, if you need a bigger size, this method might not work, but for something quick, and simple and um not sure if it's waterproof let's go give it a try you guys want to see if it's waterproof all right let's go see I'm gonna run it under the water you guys have to excuse my my sink because i've been making things as you can see but let's try it some water Not going anywhere. Rubbing, rubbing. Letters, letters. This is like so, paper. This stuff is pretty good. Alright, 
so that is a good test. All right, so looking at the edges, like that's still pretty clean. Like I don't see it like, you know, getting up underneath the water. It's not lifting up at the corners. So that's a pretty good test. All right. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll try to do some more videos uh, showing how to do labeling and things like that. I always like sharing information or find some new tips and tricks. So hopefully that was pretty fun. Just let me know if you have any questions about anything that I showed you today. I'll help as much as I can. All right, have a great day.